The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Johnny Green and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Cosi Cosa from the motion picture A Night at the Opera. after almost a year of broadcasting in Hollywood. It's quite a change to be back. Everything seems different, that is, everything except Jell-O, and Jell-O is just as popular in the East as it is in the West. It doesn't make any difference where you go, you'll find everybody likes Jell-O. It's lovely to look at with its vivid, glowing colors, and it's grand to eat with its extra-rich, real fruit flavor. Flavor so rich, so full-bodied, so thoroughly delicious, eating Jell-O is just like eating the real, ripe fruit itself. You won't find this extra rich fruit flavor in any other gelatin dessert, for only Jell-O knows the secret. So don't accept any substitutes for Jell-O. Whether you're ordering Jell-O at your grocers or in hotels or restaurants, always insist on the one and only genuine Jell-O. Let us welcome back to New York from California that sun-kissed comedian, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Hey, say, Don, Don, is this the room? Yes, Jack, come in. What are you afraid of? Well, I feel kind of funny getting back to such a big studio. Gee, what a crowd of people here. You know? Oh, what's the difference? You're not a stranger. Come on in. Oh, I don't want to. Come on. I'll give you a dish of raspberry jello. Oh, all right, Don. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. <laughs> well, here I am, folks. Jello again. Gee, I feel silly. Well, Jack, uh, how does it seem to be back in New York after being in Hollywood for almost a year? Well, Don, to tell you the truth, I feel kind of strange. I mean, here I am with a coat of tan and two frozen ears. Mm. <laughs> That's surely cold. Uh, where are you stopping in town, Jack? Uh, same place? No, I have a cozy little room on the east side. It's really quite comfortable. Isn't oh, is it far from here? Oh, about a 30 cent sleigh ride. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you ski over and see me sometime? Right? I'll do that. Yeah. yeah. New York City, New York City. Gee, you're pretty. It's a pity. You can't be in old Miami where it's warmer. Gee, I'm witty. Hello, Jack. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Hey, that's some reception you got. Why not? What good are two hands if you can't slap them together once in a while? <laughs> well, why don't you thank the studio audience for such a lovely tribute? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Would anybody like to have my autograph? Hmm. See how fickle they are, Jack? I guess you're right, Mary, yeah. You bet I am. Is this the place, Jack? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome to New York the boy who has never been out of California before, Kenny Baker. Well, Kenny, how do you like being in New York? Gee, I'm thrilled. And uh, how, do you, how do you like the weather? Gee, I'm chilled. <laughs> well, one thing I must tell you, Kenny, you ought to get rid of that straw hat you're wearing. You know? Oh, that's all right. I had it fur lined. Oh. <laughs> what have you been doing since we got in? Have you been around to see the sights? Uh, yes, Jack. I spent all day yesterday in Greenwich Village. Uh, Kenny, that's not Greenwich. You see, here in New York, it's pronounced Greenwich. Greenwich, see? Who did you go with? Johnny Gren. <laughs> hey, did you, uh, did you go anyplace else? Yeah, this morning I went over to see the Statue of Liberty And was I surprised Surprised? Why? <laughs> I didn't know it was a woman <laughs> Isn't he cute, Mary? That guy has nothing but youth Yeah <laughs> Ken, 
Danny, you must visit Grant's tomb. I sure I will. Cary Grant's a friend of mine. <laughs> Listen, Kenny, that's not Cary Grant. That's Ulysses. And that reminds me, Jell-O has six Ulysses flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Mm, delicious Grant, huh? Uh, say, Jack. Yeah? There's Johnny Green. He's been waiting all day for a reception. Oh, well, well. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> Gee, that, that's some reception you got, Jolly. Yeah, wasn't it swell? Hmm, uh -huh. being his hometown didn't hurt him any. <laughs> well, Johnny, how does it feel to be back home again? Oh, great, Jack. I spent two days just visiting relatives. Well, that was nice. Did you see any other sites? Yes, your relatives. <laughs> Listen, my relatives are in Waukegan. Yeah. When do you get back to your apartment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the folks did drop in to say hello. Say, Johnny, come here a minute, will you? I want to tell you a funny story I heard on the train. It seems that a woman got Now, folks, her. this is Don Wilson welcoming himself back from California. So give Jell-O a big hand. It's really a great dessert and has always been kind to your dish. Come on, folks. <laughs> well, Jell-O appreciates that. Play, John. playing Love as a Dancing Pin from the production at Home Abroad. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in announcing that tonight this program is starting a contest, a real brain test in which all members of your family can participate. Now, there's nothing required in this contest but a little bit of your time and patience. The winner will receive the sum of... Uh, uh, pardon me, Mary, hold this money. Come in. Uh, how do you do? Mr. Benny? Yes. On behalf of my friends and myself, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you back to New York City. Well, thanks. Uh, who are you? Just a Sixth Avenue bum. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I, I, I hope my father wasn't listening. <laughs> well, anyway, folks, as I said before, tonight this program is starting a contest, a real battle of wit and intelligence, and the winner of this contest will receive the tidy sum of, uh... Oh... Hello. Who? Oh, how are you, Mama? Well, well. Yes, I got in Thursday morning. It's Mama Jack. Yeah, give her my love, Mary. Oh, we had a wonderful trip, but the train was four hours late. Gee, if a woman did that, her husband would kill her. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you, Ma? That's good. Is Father working? He is. Gee, that's great. Who's he working for? Oh, he's in front of the house shoveling snow. Oh, I see. Tell him to try and keep that job, Mary. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Oh, Jack's fine. Yeah, Hollywood has done him a lot of good. He looks better than George Ollis. <laughs> Thanks. 
Uh, how's Otto? He did? Oh, isn't that wonderful? What is it, Mary? Otto went to the Olympic Games in Germany. Yeah, how did he make out? He won the 100-yard dash hunt. <laughs> Quite a long dog. Well, Ma, we'll see you tomorrow. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? Mama said goodbye. <laughs> fine program. These greetings are murderous. Well, anyway, folks, tonight we are starting a contest, and the chief requirement will be the brain. Now, as I said before, the winner of this contest will receive the neat sum of, uh, oh, come in. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Wilton, or Jello, I mean Jack Benny. Say, who are you? I'm Jack Benny. What do you want? I'm a reporter in the news, uh, the mirror, the telegraph, that is the, su no, the ger I mean the Times. Oh, from the Tribune, I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to how you been, that is, I mean, how are you, uh, glad to stay, where's Mary Livingston? Uh, she's here, we just got back from Hollywood. Hollywood, <laughs> well, well, yeah. say, is it true that Wally Beer, I mean, gave, uh, what do you know, uh, well, oh, Shirley I, Temple, <laughs> okay, Frank, uh, Gary Cook. <laughs> I know. Uh, are you going to say, I mean, where's Johnny Green? <laughs> He's here, they are. Now, take it easy, what do you want to know? <laughs> when did you first find out, uh, that, uh, your, or do you think, uh, what's your opinion? I mean, who's well, your favorite? <laughs> well, what's new, Mr. Benny? <laughs> well, I, I would say that conditions in Hollywood are... That's enough. It's a scoop. Now, hold still for a moment. Chin up. Now, smile. I got it. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Hey. Who is that, Jack? Winchell, Sullivan, I mean McIntyre, George, Jean, I don't know, Sing, Crosby, Valley, or Baker. Okay. Mary, find me a cheap sanitarium, will you? I'm a roving cowboy far away from home. Far from the prairie, where I used to roam, where the doggies wander and the wind blows free. Oh, my heart is yonder on the lone prairie. Oh, carry me back to the lone prairie, where the coyotes howl and the wind blows free. And when I die, you can bury me Need the western sky on the lone prairie oh, Back my gun, give me back that bronco that I used to run Let me spread my blanket The cowboy singing by the firelight's gleam. Oh, carry me back to the lone prairie where the coyotes howl and the wind blows free. And when I die. Uh, Kenny Baker singing Carry Me Back to the Lone Prairie. And now tonight, folks, as I said before, we are starting a contest in which skill will play an important part. All you have to do is follow the rules closely, and the winner will receive a cash prize amounting to... <laughs> the mailman. <laughs> See what it is, Mary. Come in, you little joy spreader. It's a letter for you, Jack. Give it to me. Hmm, 
It's from uh, Regina, Saskatchewan, the Canadian Northwest. It says, Dear Jacques Benet, <laughs> we have been listening to your... I hope they talk like that. We have been listening to your programs every Sunday and have heard enough about Hollywood and its climate. We people up here in the frozen north eat jello too. Why don't you do a play about our part of the country? Our home is near the Yukon. So give us a play of the Northwest or you know what Yukon do. <laughs> hmm, she thinks she's funny. Signed, uh, Victoria Vancouver. Must be wealthy people. Uh, do you know anybody up that way, Mary? Uh, just Winnie Peg. Oh, okay. He asked much, Jack, and I've even named a town after you. It's called Moose Jaw. <laughs> Please do not ignore this letter. I wish people would give us a little more notice. Say, Mary, we got a play of the Northwest. Uh, how about Tobacco Road? No, Mary, the Northwest, ice, snow, zero. Where can we get a play like that? I can write one, Jack. You can? Well, hurry up. Maybe we can do it. Make it snappy, Mary, will you? There you are, Jack. <laughs> I thought I'd never get it. <laughs> Let's see it. Uh, see, Sergeant Benny of the Northwest Mounted Police. Fur trappers report fur stolen. They notify you the Mounties. Well, that sounds all right. Of course, the second and third act will need a little fixing. Well, anyway, folks, this play will go on immediately after Johnny Green's next number. Say, Johnny, can you play the part of a French-Canadian? I can play the whole thing. Oh, <laughs> How about you, Wilson? Uh, Parlez-vous Francais? No, I just play one horse at a time. <laughs> oh, do I step into those things, huh? Parlez, John. and his unmounted musicians playing Mile a Minute with Johnny at the piano. And now for our play, Sergeant Benny of the Northwest Mounted. The scene takes place in Alaska between Fairbanks and Pickford. <laughs> Do you know him? <laughs> Am I cold tonight, huh? Mary, you wrote this, didn't you? Yes. Well, the Northwest Mounted are in Canada. I made it Alaska. It's colder up there. Oh, I see. Huh? Well, then remember, boys, we're all French Alaskans. Uh, you're really Texas Rangers that got lost. Oh, oh I see. Okay, then. Sergeant Benny of the Northwest Mounted. Curtain. Music. <laughs> When the moon comes over the mounted of the Northwestern Mounted Police. Hello, Northwest Mounted speaking. You've been robbed. Well, get your own man. It's too cold tonight. <laughs> Gee, it's cold up here in Alaska. Shoot! 
<laughs> yep. She's a cold night. Here he comes, more snow. Uh, where, um... Where is Officer Andre? Andre is in his igloo. Igloo? What is an igloo? A lot of ice without ginger ale. <laughs> oh. Well, tell Andre I want for to see him. Andre? The sergeant, she wants for to see you. Abba dabba glow pow. <laughs> What's that? I'm an Eskimo. <laughs> Here I am, Sarge. Andre, look at the thermometer. What does she say? It is 40 jello zero. 40, eh? What is AT&T? 171. Buy me, buy me 10 shares of thermometer. And keep the window closed so it'll go up. Now, Mary, where does our play go from here? Uh, wait a minute, Jack. Just a minute, I'll have it. Here you are. Oh, yeah. The first line is mine. Andre, where are the rest of the mounted police? Where is Jean and Pierre? They're having trouble with their horses. Mary, in Alaska, they have dogs. They have them in New York, too, but I want horses. Oh. <laughs> Send for them, Andre. Sergeant, you sent for us, and we are here. What do I say? Uh, here's your part, Kenny. Oh, hello, Sarge. Mm -hmm. I hear you are having trouble with the horses. Oui, oui. We play them to win, and they come in second. <laughs> I thought that would get a bigger laugh. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> now, listen, you are all brave men, but you hang around and do nothing. What do you want that we shall do, Sarge? The book, he show we have been here 12 years. There have been 435 robbery and 12 murder. And not once did you get your man. What do you say to D? Maybe we're not the type. <laughs> There is something to that. Come in. Electric fans, ice cream cones? No, not today. <laughs> what was that, Mary? I just put that in as a menace. Oh. <laughs> go ahead, Jack. Now, I warn you, men, these cannot go on any longer. You must either get your man or get out. Who is that? That's Benny Rubin. I wrote a part for him, too. Oh, is Rubin in this? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. come in. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but is this the Northwestern Mountain Place I'm speaking to? Sure and it is. I mean, we. <laughs> what is the trouble? Well, it's in the first trap in business I'm in. And I'm just trying to make an honest living skinning skunks and minding me own business. <laughs> and, Mr. Sergeant, what do you think happened? Tell him to me. Well, this morning when I woke up, some thief skinned me out of me skunk skin. <laughs> and if I'm lying to you, I hope to be bitten by a snake and have to take three drinks of good liquor. You say you were skunked out of your skin? No, sir. Skinned out of me skunk. <laughs> what, uh, what is he supposed to be, Mary? A Greek. Oh. <laughs> well, go back and take it again, will you, Reuben? A Greek this time, right, will you? Greek. Come in. <laughs> Uh, pardon me, is this the Northwest Mounted Police I'm speaking on? <laughs> Wait a minute, is that, is that what you wanted, Mary? I don't know, I think so. Oh. <laughs> well, what is the trouble? About one year ago, I come in from Greases, and I want to go into hunting business, so I get myself a hunting dog to catch the skunk. And the first thing he does is catch my brother. <laughs> well, sir, I want to tell you that at that time, I was making very big money. <laughs> But one fine day, I found me a dialect changing on me. Your dialect changing? Yes, sir, would you believe it? <laughs> so, so I am telling the lunchroom, and believe it, Ripley or not, I went into the fur business, and here I am, a felt picker, feeling in the skin you lost to cash. <laughs> Hey, wait, did you ever meet Schlepperman? Schlepperman, of course. He's my Hollywood representative. <laughs> well, anyway, Lieutenant. Sergeant. Thank you. <laughs> Mine first was stolen this morning, and a skin cannot walk away without the animal inside. We have just heard what this man said. There is a fur thief in the Northwest. Now do your duty. Keep up the good name of the Northwest Mounted. Go and get your man. But, Sergeant, where can we find this man? I have a clue. Pierre, you go to Manitoba. John, you go to Manhattan. And Andre, you go to, uh... To Montreal. Right. Get going. Thank you, Sergeant, and stay by the boy. In the meantime... 
If your wife wants a nice piece of 20th century font, here's my card. <laughs> Clap him in his schnorris. Skinners and furriers. Where are you <laughs> Well, Mary, where does our play go from here? Oh, don't worry, I'll have it. While Mary is writing the next scene, let me tell you about Jell-O. It has that new extra rich, fresh fruit flavor and tastes twice as good as ever before. So be sure to look for the big red letters on the package. Is it ready yet, Mary? No. Then let me tell you about our contest. Tonight we are starting an unusual contest in which every member of your family can participate. The first prize, without any strings whatsoever attached to it, will be the sum of... Here it is, Jack. I wonder what the boys are doing now. So do I. That's your line, Jack. Oh, oh, I see. I wonder what the boys are doing now. Come in. Here you are, Sergeant. You told us to get our man and we got him. Here's the fellow who stole his fur. That is not him. Hey, wait, what's the matter with you? You got the wrong people. I'm the man who lost the fur. Mary, for heaven's sake, you wrote this. What do we do now? I don't know. What do you think, Jack? I don't know. What do you think, Reuben? Well, in a situation such as that... I've got it. Why don't you kiss and make up like they do in pictures? That's it, but who are we going to kiss? Not me. Play, Johnny Grimm. <laughs> Folks like jazz music, some like ballads, some prefer grand opera. But here's one symphony everybody will go for a fruit symphony made with jello. Try it on your family, and you'll hear some compliments that will be music to your ears. To make fruit symphony, here's what you do dissolve a package of lemon jello in warm water and to chill. When it's thickened a bit, put in two cups of diced grapefruit, a half cup each of cut up orange and pineapple. When you turn it out of the mold, you have a sunburst of color clear, glowing lemon jello with grapefruit, orange, and pineapple shining through. It's a swell wintertime fruit dessert, and it tastes just as intriguing as it looks. Be sure, though, to make your fruit symphony with genuine Jell-O, for only Jell-O tastes extra rich, twice as good. Of the uh, 20th program of the new Jell-O series. And we'll be with you again uh, next... Me, Jack. Here's a telegram that just came for you. Do you mind if I read it? No, no, Don. Go right ahead. It says, Dear Jack, the Jell-O family of all six flavors extends to you their heartiest congratulations on the splendid showing you made in the National Radio Editor's Poll conducted annually by the New York World Telegram. Stop. For the second consecutive year, our Jell-O program was voted the favorite of all the shows on the air. And for the third consecutive year, you were selected America's outstanding radio comedian. Jell-O shares your justified pride in this fine accomplishment. Signed, Clarence Francis, President General Foods, makers of Jell-O. Well, thanks, Don. I'm very, very happy about it. Thank you. And, uh, I, uh, I want to thank my author, Harry W. Kahn, all the members of my cast and everybody associated with the Jell-O program, and, of course, the radio editors for their kind consideration. And I'd like to say that, uh, well, that uh, Frank Parker is sitting in our audience tonight, who was a great figure in helping us win the poll last year. I wish we had time to have him come up and say hello, but we haven't. Huh? You forgot to mention me, Jack. I did say members of my cast. Mm, fine name, Mary Cast. Well, good night, folks. What became of my contest? <laughs> Love and Bloom is from She Loves Me Not. This is the National Broadcasting Company.